Every year in the NFL, it's a new team. As far as goals go, we have one. Putting a f***ing ring on our finger. Welcome to the Buccaneers Observer Podcast. This is Ralph Phillips. Hi, Molly Bay. Today is, what did I say, May 17th, 2020? May 17th, 2020. One of those May months. 119 days until we get to see the Buccaneers play. Right around the corner, if you ask me. Too many days. I'll be happy when it's double digits. This is the last, this is when you're turning the corner with the last part of the track, man, when you're running towards the goal line. There's a term for it. Can't think of it. Come on, you were a runner too. Yeah, yeah. It's a it long time ago. <laughs> Many years back ago. Back when they still had dinosaurs. Back when we had to chase our dinner down. <laughs> 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 oh, you're such an ageist. All right. Good to be back. Took the week off last week. Not on purpose. It was kind of on purpose. I don't know. Yeah. But there, there just wasn't a whole lot of news. Wasn't a whole lot going on. Blah, blah, blah. We got excuses. We always got excuses. We're getting excuses. I wish there was a job that paid you to have excuses. They do. It's called the government. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. What? Uh, we won't get into it. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk politics. I know, right? And after that. Everyone loves discuss, that when they listen to football. Let's discuss some religion. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, go, let's go to this Buccaneers podcast and get our daily dose of politics. All right. You know what? Cadillac Williams... Is an assistant running back coach at Auburn now. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, it was fascinating. Was he was really... the running back when I first started being a fan. Mm-hmm. That's who was. And I remember when I was pregnant and couldn't fit into any of my jerseys, that's the only one you would give me to wear of yours. <laughs> you couldn't even look at the other ones. I know. I might my jerseys. stretch out the John Lynch <laughs> ones. So sorry, babe. It's Caddy. He was a big time running back at Auburn, and he was really happy to go back and be a running back coach there, an assistant running back coach. He was actually surprised that he got the job because, you know, he didn't have any coaching experience. But, you know, he's such a big name at Auburn. He broke all kinds of records with him and everything. But what really stood out to me from this article is that he's the lowest paid assistant on the Tigers staff last year. You know how much he made? As how the, much? As the lowest paid. It's ridiculous. How much? No, take a guess. Um, let's go two hundred thousand. Three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, and he was the lowest paid assistant on the staff. I picked the wrong profession, man. Yeah, no kidding. Good lord! And wh- what was his title on the staff? Assistant running back coach. Wow. Yeah. Those programs must have bokus of money. Those college programs, man, they throw yeah, money that's around. what I'm saying. Well, they don't have to pay the players, so yeah, I guess that helps a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. And I'm sure it brings in a lot of revenue for the college. Crap ton of revenue. Those stands are huge. Those stadiums, and they just packed. I guess. See, we're talking about something we don't know anything about. I know. We are just not college football people. Ralph. We should know better (laughs) by now. (laughs) We should call this podcast Discussing Things We Don't Know Anything (laughs) About. Ralph and Molly Run Their Mouths. Accurate description of the podcast, I think. There was an NFL video the other day on the top 25 defensive touchdowns. Oh, my gosh. If that didn't remind me of 2011 all over again. These were the defensive touchdowns. Top 25 defensive touchdowns of 2019. Six of them were Jameis Winston pick sixes. Oh, God. That's ugly. Yeah, and like in 2011, they would have all the highlight reels from the season, and they would all be on the Buccaneers. Against the Buccaneers. They were so bad. Uh, The number two top 25 defensive touchdown was the Atlanta pick six in week 17. That would hurt. It was like getting curb stomped again. Yeah. Why would they do that to us? Well, the, it didn't make any sense to me the way they had them set up because a lot of the touchdowns, the defensive touchdowns, didn't really mean anything during the game or whatever. You know, it, did, it didn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. You know, it was like the, the the number two one was the Atlanta pick six against us in week 17. That had no bearing on anything. Neither one of us were going to the playoffs. Was it just a good looking play, maybe? Yeah, and it was an overtime. It ended the game. Blah blah blah. But still, you know, you're like, "Mm, you know, how was that number one? Uh 
the the Damakong Sioux touchdown versus the Rams was on there though. That's the only one they had of our defensive what? touchdowns. I know that was a good one though. <laughs> yeah, it was. Sue, he had two touchdowns last year. Vita Vea had a touchdown. Oh that yeah, pass. receiving. Yeah, defense about that. You know what they need to do. Just to balance it out is put some offensive guys on defense. <laughs> let them let them tackle somebody. Who do we have on offense? Well, Mike Evans can uh, play Donovan corner. Smith, Donovan Smith, the way he laid out that Rams running back. Oh, uh, no, that was uh, Marcus Peters. Yeah, Marcus Peters. Yeah. yeah. He laid him out. That was Donovan Smith playing defense. Right. He laid him out. But you really don't want your offensive players to be good on defense. Yeah, you don't want them to be good tacklers. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't ever even want to know if they're good tacklers. No, exactly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Did you see the Saints cut guard Larry Warford? Yes, yes. And I would like to have him so bad. Did he get picked up? Has anybody picked him up? Not that was that the old of. news. That was on the 8th. Yeah, but he, he's, days. he's expensive. I do. That's why yeah. I cut him. Yeah. That really surprised me. It shocked me, man. I mean, that's he's still good. They 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 cut him because of the cap situation. That sucks. You would think they would come up with some way to keep him. Yeah. Especially something as vital as your offensive line. Um well they ended up they got some good replacements for him. The check and see if he's been picked up with anybody. Hey, you remember that Tom Brady charity event that got won for what was it, like eight hundred and fifty thousand or eight hundred thousand? Uh-huh. Yeah. You know who won that? Who? A YouTuber. Oh, really? His name is Logan Thirty Acre. He does puppet show skits based on the Super Mario Brothers arcade game. <laughs> what? That is such a niche market. <laughs> and he said he would have been willing to pay up to two million dollars for the chance to dine with his. Wow, idol. we well, are pay- paying these YouTubers way too much money. We ain't paying them. <laughs> well, you know that's the thing. I mean, I've lived on YouTube for like a decade. Yeah, you know, that's been like my main source of video entertainment. I've never heard of this guy. And yeah, me ha- neither. That happens all the time. I'll hear about, oh, you know, this YouTuber, you know, made five million dollars last year doing makeup tutorials or something. And I'm like, of all the makeup tutorials I watch, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen her. <laughs> you know, I wonder about that. Is if YouTube has not been the most company that has spawned the most millionaires in the history of humanity. Oh yeah. It has really given the platform to the everyday person, you know, and, and they've done well with it. I mean, the everyday person has. It's all good. Man, I love you too. I do too. And it's really cool that you can get someone who like does stuff like put on puppet shows of <laughs> Mario Brothers well, reenactments. And you're like, how is that ever going to make money? And then they turn into a millionaire who just has $2 million to throw around and get Tom Brady to hang out with them. Like, yeah. it's just crazy that that even a market for that exists, but that, it really is the American dream. It really you is. You can do anything really that you want to do, yeah. like put on a puppet show <laughs> of Mario Brothers. Oh. Yeah, I don't know how beneficial to society YouTube is, but it's very entertaining. And that's not true either, because I have learned a lot from YouTube. I watch more like instructional and how to stuff. You know, it's like anything breaks on my car. First place I go now is YouTube, you know, because not only do you get instructions, you get the actual visual of how to you know, work on it is always beneficial. I learned how to cut my hair on YouTube and that's led to me butchering it quite a few times. Hey, you, you, you watched a <laughs> lot of makeup tutorials on YouTube that's and true. hair and yes, hair tutorials. Hair. Yeah. You learned how to do all them fancy braids and stuff. Fancy braids. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I, I think YouTube is awesome, but Logan 30 acre is apparently a huge Tom Brady fan. It was apparently his like house is a shrine to Tom Brady. Oh, that's so creepy. That's yeah. a little creepy. I don't know if I'd let that guy within ten feet of me. <laughs> we, we're going to have coupled to keep an eye with on the later. puppet show aspect of this whole thing. <laughs> I just, I'm not really sure how I feel about this. <laughs> oh my gosh! I hope he brings his puppets. Hey, maybe he'll do a, a thing at halftime during one of the Bucks games or something. Maybe they'll bring him in to do motivational speeches for the team. Have you ever been to like a like Renaissance era, like Renaissance fair or something where they're doing the little weird puppet shows? They're always so weird. Yes, with you. Yeah, yeah. we went. It's just, a, I don't know. Let's <laughs> yeah. stop talking about I'm, the puppets because they're never gotten creeping me out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we're, I was watching videos with a baby the other day, our daughter, and she's big into Elf on the Shelf. She's had this Elf on the Shelf for, what, two years? And... 
You, you know, can't not, put it away. You, yeah, you're not supposed to touch the elf on the shelf, right? We put she it disregarded that rule immediately. immediately. She just like grabbed it and carries it around with her all the time. It's really cute. She sleeps with it. I mean, not all the time. It's like one of her rotating things. She'll get, she'll, she'll be with it for like a couple of weeks and then, you know, put it in the oven for a month. <laughs> <laughs> it she does makes her that. mad or something. <laughs> Uh, she'll also like tie it to a chair with her hair ties she puts it in a little oh, barbie she chair loves putting things in jail and it's crazy but she's wanting to watch elf on the shelf videos on youtube right so we go and we search for them there's always there's a whole bunch of them and there's one that was a shark it was a shark and elf on the shelf she just saw the some thumbnail and she was like oh i want to watch that so we did and it's a dude that's got a hand puppet that's a shark <laughs> And he's got millions of views. It, that one was so weird, too, because they ended up putting cheese Whiz all in the shark's mouth, and it just got everywhere. And then there were some weird baby sharks with the same. It was, yeah, it's very strange. It's a rabbit hole. YouTube you, is you, definitely a rabbit you, hole. You just go down the rabbit hole, <laughs> as we just did with this conversation. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, before we go any further, let's uh, let's pay some bills real quick. We made the switch to Anchor.fm for our podcast hosting platform, and we could not be more thrilled. If you hadn't, haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let Ralph explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor also distributes your podcast for you, so you don't have to worry about uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all that. They automatically do it for you. It's a huge help. Huge you can help. also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast, all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Okay, back to some Buccaneers football. You know, DeMar Dotson is a free agent. We had talked about this quite extensively on the podcast. If you're not familiar, DeMar Dotson has been our left tackle. He is the longest. Right tackle. Our right tackle. He was the longest tenured Buccaneer. Uh, he played, what, with his 11 years, 12 years? And he's got a real great backstory. There's an article on pewterreport.com about DeMar Dodson. It's a great, great article. It's kind of a tribute to him by Mark Cook. And yes. And there well was a deserved. lot of good information in there I didn't know about. Like, I didn't know that he came to the team. He had not played football in college. He played basketball. I think you do that. Well, I think we had talked about that. Because remember, when you were a fan, he wasn't a starter. The announcers... Never talk about know, that. How would I so ever strange. know that? Because they love talking about the former <laughs> basketball players. Anybody that has played a former sport, they got to bring that up. But they never yeah. did with DeMar Dotson. He still wants to play. And me and you have talked about this, that how the fan base and the media just kind of, he's non-existent anymore. You know, we, we drafted Tristan Moore, and now DeMar Dotson is just a non-factor. I mean, he, he was with the team for 11, 12 years. And, you know, he played, he was a starter for us for nine and he's done well. Even he was, he was a great Buccaneer and he's just gone now. And we're like, no fanfare, just like yeah, Vin no Vincent, fan Jackson. Vincent Jackson, same way. It's very strange to me, but uh, Mark Cook did do a write up on it. It was an excellent article. If you get a chance, go read it. But apparently Dotson still wants to play. And, and he wants a, to be a starter. Yes. And he, he's gotten offers from other teams, but he said it wasn't the right. I think everyone just wants him to be a backup. Yeah. So we probably do too. Yeah. Uh, and he he just doesn't want to do that, but he's not, he hasn't decided to not play for the Buccaneers yet. I and, think that if he doesn't get a starting job, he's just going to retire. That's kind of the sense kind of I got from the article. Out. Yeah. And Jason Light said when asked about it, whether DeMar Dotson was coming back or if they were going to offer him a contract or anything, he said, uh, you never know. So DeMar Dotson's still out there. We did because we had talked about it on the podcast and we didn't know if he was retiring or anything because we just hadn't heard anything. Yeah. So now we know Dotson is still wanting to play. He's still out there looking for a starting job. If he doesn't get it, he's probably going to retire. Uh, the Buccaneers might offer him something as a backup and he might take that. Don't know. But it's still a possibility he could stay with the Buccaneers. I'd be a little sad if he didn't retire as a Buccaneer. Yeah. Like if he did go to another team. He never, I, I never felt like Dotson got the love he deserved. I think that happens for a lot of offensive linemen. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. The underrated guys. Ticket prices for the Buccaneers have increased 135%. 
while the Patriots have dropped 30. Really? Yeah. The Tom Brady effect. The Tom Brady effect. Patriots has had the biggest drop in price of the whole league, while the Raiders have the biggest increase. You know how much their ticket prices have increased? How much? 527%. The Raiders? The Raiders. That's what happens when you go to Vegas, baby. Well, I don't know <laughs> how you can do that after you move stadiums. I well, mean, you're still trying to build a fan. I get that you probably need to pay for the stadium, but you're still trying to build the fan base in that area. Well, their tickets aren't that expensive, though. So, I mean, this is kind of a little... That's how you could, with statistics, you can really manipulate stuff. Uh, the Patriots still have the 12th most expensive tickets on the secondary market at $433 per seat. You know, I mean, it's not like they drop to the bottom of the tickets. Right. Prices. You know, it's they just relative. have a 39% decrease in their tickets. Uh, we got a 135% increase and we're selling tickets at $485 on the secondary market. That's the average. But the Raiders had a 527% increase, but they might have been selling their tickets for $5 a whop. <laughs> right. They were I, giving I them away. <laughs> uh, the Bears had the second largest decline with 22%. Don't know what's going on there. They mad. They do not like that Trubisky. I don't. And who'd they get? Foles? Did they? I can't keep track of Nick Foles. <laughs> he just bounces so much. And he's so blah. There's not, you know, it's just like, uh, I get you know, confused. Someone commented on one of our YouTube videos. I guess we went on this tangent about Foles before and said he's actually a really good quarterback, which I don't doubt. I mean, he won a Super Bowl as a backup with the Eagles, but he's just very, he's not an exciting quarterback. Or memorable? No, at all. So that's that's why I'm like, eh, was it Nick Foles or? I mean, there's a list of quarterbacks that you could call them out to me, and I'd be like, I have no idea if they're still in the league, or if they're a backup, if they're starters. I don't know because they just flop around everywhere. But I think Nick Foles went to the Bears. Okay. And that would be very disappointing if I was a Bear fan that you've got to choose between Trubisky or Foles. Uh, I'd go with Tru or um, Foles. <laughs> Like, no question. Yeah, well, Trubisky was a little bit more exciting. It might be worse, but... <laughs> <laughs> but remember when they got uh, our quarterback, Glennon? Glennon. <laughs> a couple God. years ago? Gosh, what a mess. They what? were so excited about him. Everybody was like... Oh, they were? Oh, yeah. Oh. They were like, oh, he's going to light it up. He was so underrated. And they Those didn't poor know how fans. To use him. Oh, yeah. Immediately, they were like, oops. He was just a bad quarterback. He's at the Jags now. Well, we traded... <laughs> we got their bad quarterback, Blaine Gabbert. Oh, right. They got our bad quarterback. This, these bad quarterbacks, they just get passed around. Like, yeah, I mean, they always end up being the backup. I think they're good practice guys. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're good for... Probably, and they're probably players that you can depend on short term. Yeah. You know, yeah. they might be able to finish a game stand in for yeah, a couple weeks. Remember that Steelers game with uh, Glennon brought us back? Won the game for us. I want to say it was a touchdown to Vincent Jackson. It might have been. I do Mike remember Evans. that. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm buying you a Mike Lennon jersey for your birthday. Oh my gosh! The NFL and club executives have reached a. This is a. This is non Buccaneers news. This is league wide information. The NFL and club executive reached an agreement to raise the debt limit for all 32 teams for the 2020 season, rising from 350 million per club up to 500 million per club. Okay, I'm sorry. Who are they going into debt to? I mean, what does that even mean? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that they had a limit. Interesting. Yeah, they don't allow the teams to have but so much debt. It's a smart way. It's a smart thing to do. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Because some of these dummies would just go way into huge debt. Uh, raising the debt limit it isn't official yet, though. Uh, there, there's a owners meeting coming up. I think it's Tuesday. Okay. And that's when they're going to vote on it. But it's, it's just formality. They're going to vote on it. They're going to right, especially given the circumstances. Yeah, it's just going to be a one year thing. I, I, I think. I don't know. Don't know. Well, it might be something they do for a year and then vote, vote on, on it next again year. next year. Yeah. 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 They need to. Yeah, they got some interesting things to vote on. This meeting coming up, the one about the minority coaches and stuff. I don't think that one's going to pass. I hope not. It's really, it just doesn't doesn't feel right. Yeah. I think you would say, <laughs> what was it on the Twitter? There was somebody had posted. They said, you also get uh, teams who have white running backs will get a fifth down. <laughs> They're going to pass them. <laughs> The the proposed rule is teams that hire minority GMs and coaches will get, they'll be able to bump their draft position up. Yeah, it's quite a substantial bump too. 
I'm going to say it's like six spots or something. It doesn't make sense. I don't know how it would work, but, you yeah, know, whatever. Right. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's very controversial. Virtual. Virtual. <laughs> controversial. Uh, Joe Buck's fan had an article out on Tom Brady the other day. He had some quotes from Jay Feely, who used to be a uh, a friend of Tom Brady. He still is. He played in the NFL, but now he's a CBS correspondent. He talked about, not Joe Feely, but the Joe Buck's article. They talked about how Tom Brady came to the Buccaneers because he just wants to have fun. And they were like, well, Gerald McCoy had that same mentality and the fans disliked him for, you know, so why is this different? It was really dumb because I'm like, well, one, you know, has six Super Bowls and the other one's <laughs> never even sniffed the playoffs. You know, it's <laughs> a huge difference. Right. But uh, Jay Feely said, quote, I think Tom is excited about having some autonomy in that offense, the ability to have a part and a say in that. Offense. Well, of course, Joe Buck says, well, now there's yet another hint that Brady has shot calling power with the Buck. This coming from perhaps his best friend. To Joe, the biggest issue with Brady will be to keep him upright. Some believe as the weather turned cold last year in New England, Brady's long ball arm began to wither. If this is not just a coincidence, then Joe hopes we have a late winter coming. Also, Joe is curious if Brady will be held to the same standard as GMC for the nerve to have fun. Now, if I sound like I'm a moron there for talking in the third person, that no, that's the way Joe Buccaneers fans. Uh, it's a it's a unique style they have. Some people it kind of bothers them. Doesn't bother me too much, but <laughs> for people that aren't familiar with that, that's not me talking. That's Joe Buck. Yes, it, it's really weird, and we've talked about this with Joe Buck's fan. I mean, they're great. They're the they're the hardest working guys in the Bucks media. I think the, nothing gets by them. I mean, they watch everything, they listen to everything, and they report on everything that they feel they can or should report on. But they seem to miss things, and it's very, very weird to me. And so it's like their player evaluation is, is really not that good. But for them to be saying that Tom Brady is going to have shot-calling power with the buck makes it seem like they know absolutely nothing about Bruce Arians. They didn't read his book. They don't listen to any of his press conferences. I mean, because Bruce Arians is huge in the quarterback having say in the offense. As a matter of fact, he lets the quarterback pick. I mean, what do they script? The first 30 plays? Uh, I think first 15 offensive plays. Yeah, and he lets the quarterback pick. Right, the quarterback what picks those. Yeah. So of course Tom Brady is going to have a say in the offense. <laughs> I know. I'm That's the nature of they, the offense. They are, tra and th you know, this started when Tom Brady. The rumors first started happening that Tom Brady was going to come down, or maybe it was right after he got. But the somebody had got on national television and said that Brady wanted to go to the Bucks because he was going to have say in personnel and play call. Right. And he was going to do be the GM, basically, is what they made it sound like. <laughs> right. So it's like ever since then, that has been what they have tried to drive home. And you could say, yeah, he's got to say in, per in the personnel department because he got Ron Gronkowski here, you know. But it's not like he was sitting in the draft room telling Jason Light who to pick. And it's not like he's going to be sitting in the offensive coordinator room telling Byron Leftwich, you know, how to draw up these plays. And lest we forget, the man spent the majority of his career under Bill Belichick, who you know he got probably no say in what happened there. Yeah, so very yeah, little. Very little. So it, it's not like he's accustomed, accustomed to calling the shots, and this is going to be a culture shock for him. Yeah. yeah. Now, he did have the ability to change plays. At the yeah, moment. I'm sure he had some... Mm -hmm. discretion given right. that he earned let's be clear about that yeah. but it does it, yeah it's not like he was belichick was coming up to him and saying okay brady we got a tough opponent coming up this week in the playoffs uh what plays do you want to run right you know <laughs> yeah which is that's what, exactly what bruce arians does i mean he makes no bones about it he wants his quarterback to be involved in the play calling as much as the offensive coordinator that is he has said that god how many times you know he wants the quarterback to feel like this is his team and and like, in order to be a leader you have to have a command like that i mean yeah bruce arians puts too much stock in leadership too very much yeah jpp what up just a shout out to the leader over there straighten that defense <laughs> <buddy>. he sure <laughs> did yes we were, he did me and, me and molly were sitting here we had a night to ourselves we had a date night 
where we could talk about adult things that use a little bit of brain power. So yeah. we our topic conversation was the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers. <laughs> we talked for from five o'clock in the evening until two o'clock at night, and uh, we talked about JPP about how you know. Molly was adamant when the, the season was over. She said, JPP is the player we have to sign. You know, she's, he was the free agent that you thought was most important to resign. I mean, we knew we were going to get Shaq Barrett, whether it was a contract or a franchise mm-hmm. tag. The quarterback situation, we weren't really sure how that was going to shake out. But to me, JPP was more important mm-hmm. than re-signing Jameis. And it's hard to argue with that because... You know, when he came back after his neck injury, what was it? Week nine, neck. week eight, somewhere he came around back. There. Yeah, before then, our secondary had been playing badly. They were a mess. The we secondary. Were looking, we were looking to break records and uh, how many yardages we were giving up. Yardages. <laughs> and uh, JPP came back, got up in their face, like literally. And uh, next thing you know, we're breaking records for batting balls out of the air and, and jettisoned Vernon Hargraves. Vernon Hargraves, yeah. Who JPP reportedly chewed out. Yeah, and that's what Bruce Arians wants. He wants the veterans in the locker room to take control and be in command. And I think he listened to JPP. I think JPP said, hey, man, this Vernon Hargraves guy is just not, he's not serious. And so Bruce Arians was like, all right, he's gone. Or I think JPP probably wouldn't have even had to say anything. All that had to happen was... Word of that disagreement got back to Bruce Arians. Yeah. Because I think he's good at reading the room. Yes. He's a people person. And then going back to the Joe Bucks fan article, he said the biggest issue with Brady will be to keep him upright. And again, I'm like, you know, people give our offensive line, you know, such hell. And a lot of it has to do with seeing Jameis Winston scrambling. All. Yeah, you get the impression that he's under pressure. Right. And he scrambled a lot for no reason. He liked to scramble and he got spooked a lot and all this. Now, I'm not saying our offensive line is, you know, top tier, but they're better than average. And Tom Brady's a tough dude. I mean, he he gets hit. He got hit at New England quite a bit. And, you know, because because he stands in the pocket, he'll take a hit. He doesn't try to run from you. You know, he's going to throw the ball. He gets hit. I ain't worried about. Tom Brady getting hit. No, and he'll do the offensive line a lot of favors by getting the ball out quicker. Mm-hmm. He's a faster decision maker yes. than Jameis Winston was. Yeah, if he sees pressure coming, his first instinct is to throw the ball. You know, Jameis Winston, if he feels pressure coming, his first instinct was tuck the ball and start running around. Yeah, we're not going to get that with Tom Brady at all. And the other plus side is when Tom Brady gets hit, he actually draws a flag on that. <laughs> right. Whereas Jameis, they turn the other direction. Oh, and... no. That is so crazy. That Dallas game, when that Dallas player came up behind Jameis Winston, he was outside the pocket and he was getting ready to throw the bomb to Deshaun Jackson, who was open down the field for a touchdown. It would have been a touchdown if Deshaun Jackson would have decided to catch. But he was winding up to throw that ball. And that, uh, who was it? The defensive end for the Dallas Cowboys. Anyhow, he came around and basically clotheslined James Winston right in the face from behind. Wow. No flag. And James Winston ended up fumbling, and I think they scored a touch, picked up a fumble, ran in for a touchdown. And then last year, I, got, we, I, I could count I don't know, almost 10 times that James Winston got hit in the helmet, and they just never called it. Well, these defenders are going to get a flag just for looking at Tom Brady. Yeah. Yeah, true. Your favorite Oh, and then website. real quick, hold up. Real quick, go back to the Joe Bucks fan article. Okay. He said, uh, some believe as the weather turned cold last year in New England, Brady's long ball arm began to wither. Oh, God, this shit. Yeah. Uh, I've got my video coming out. Eventually. About that. In another can, month. Can Brady, can Brady throw the long ball? Is he going to be able to throw the ball in Bruce Arian's system? Because you know... I said Brady will never come here because he just will not fit in Bruce Arians' system. Bruce Arians' system is a you know more vertical system. You don't have these check downs, these dink and dunks, the little crossing routes and all that good stuff. And that's what Tom Brady's used to. So, you know, he says, uh, J- Joe Buck's fan said that Brady's long ball arm began to wither. Of course, he qualified that with some belief. Uh, I'm here to tell you that's not true. So watch the video I got coming out. When Ralph gets to it, <laughs> y'all need to give this him is, a hard time because yeah, me giving him a hard time is not working. This is my fifth iteration of this video. I've done it. Didn't like it. Started over again. This is the problem with artists is that they are never happy with what they do. Yeah. And I usually try not to let good enough get in the way of, or perfection get in the way of good enough. But with this one, I just could, I can't, I finally got it. Now I've, I'm just gotta. You just gotta do it. 
I just, well, I got to get it clipped together. Get it. Anyhow, anyhow. Be on the lookout for it, guys. Eventually. Before your social security check arrives. <laughs> your favorite website, Pro Football Focus, has said that the <laughs> Bucks passing attack may not meet, meet re- much resistance. Ugh, can't get it out. Uh, we have the league's easiest schedule against opposing pass defenses. That's stupid. In 2020. That is dumb. I. You know, and they're looking at strength of matchups, mm-hmm. but I'm like, so they say the Bucks draw a whopping twelve top ten matchups. Yeah, because that's we have two of the best wide receivers in the league. I mean, yeah, all their matchups are going to be <laughs> top ten. <laughs> They're better than everyone. <laughs> yeah, how many how many uh, top ten matchups do the Miami Dolphins have? Right, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. If you got, I mean, we man, we have so many good players in every position. We, I think. We are big, even without Tom Brady, people are sleeping on us. But I mean, you know, people think, oh, they got Tom Brady and Rob Gorkowski. Now they have a shot. Now we had a shot before then. Trust right. Me. And that's part of the reason that Tom Brady even came here because yeah. we had a team that was put together enough to attract a talent like Tom Brady. Right. Who he looked at this team and said, I can win here. Ooh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Look at all these shiny toys. I mean, just the receiving core, one, you know, the tight ends and the receivers. Right there, any quarterback's going to want to play with those guys. Yeah. You know, if Mike Evans can make Johnny Manziel look like a professional football player, (laughs) think about what he's going to do with Tom Brady. He can get Johnny Manziel drafted in the first round. You know, He was first overall, right? Johnny football? No. Fact check. Yeah, fact check that. I'm pretty sure he was quite far down. Uh, uh, Tom Brady has had some good receivers in his time. You know, of course, he had Randy Moss. Yeah. He was, uh, Johnny Manziel was the 22nd overall pick. Okay. You are correct. What'd you say? I'm not repeating that. <laughs> you can listen to it again on the podcast. I'm going to make that my ringtone. <laughs> and he's uh, Tom Brady has had Wes Welker. He's had Danny Amendola. Danny Amendola. Julian Edelman. Edelman. But he's never had a Mike Evans, a 50-50 ball. You know, a guy that you could just chunk it up to him, whether he's covered or not. And there's a good chance he's going to come down with a ball. You know, he's never had anybody like Besides that. Randy Moss. <laughs> he's not a 50-50 he was a little before my time. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. You chunk it to him, he's gonna, he's gonna. He was more than fifty fifty. He was like eighty twenty. I mean, he was gonna get the ball, but it all depended if he felt like running the route. Yeah. You know, and he's definitely not gonna go across the middle. Yeah. You know, and he's not gonna take any big hits. And all that. But you know, this is this is a new new thing for Tom, and he does. Like I said, when he gets pressured, he throws the ball. You know, he's gonna pick somebody and he's gonna throw the ball to him. It's usually going to be one of the underneath guys. But he's going to have Mike Evans now to throw to. When he's Who, when he throws his hand up, you better yeah. throw it to him. Yeah, when you, yeah. I hope Tom Brady learns that first day in the room. Yeah. You know, when I throw my hand up, just throw me the ball. And, you know, then, of course, there's Chris Godwin, who's just tough as nails. You know, he's going to be getting all these over-the-middle passes. I, I tell you what, it's, it's going to be fantastic. I don't think – there's nobody – I can't think of a defense that could even come close to stopping us. They couldn't last year. Nobody stopped us. Nobody could stop. Now we're going to have Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski. Oh, this is crazy. I tell you, as Buccaneers fan, this, this is – if you've been a Buccaneers fan for I don't care how long, two days – or two decades. This is something to cherish and remember for the rest of your life because this is the best, best feeling of hope and the best team we've ever had. It- and even if you're here just for Tom Brady, you are in for such a treat because oh, the rest of the team, awesome. I mean, we, if you, we forget about the offense, you look at the defense and we have so many special guys there. You know, mm-hmm. we have Shaq Barrett, yeah. Sue, Vita. Yeah. Uh, it, if you're a new fan or you just listen to this because of Tom Brady or whatever, you don't know of most of these guys because the Buccaneers are not a big national media. We don't get the attention. But we have some, if not the best players at some of our positions. You know, Shaq Barrett, best defensive end out, bar none. You'll get a chance to watch him and you'll get the chance to see him mic'd up. He's awesome. He's entertaining. He's great. Uh, We got Devin White, great personality, great football player. He was our number one draft pick last year, not 2020, last season. Loves horses, a country boy, tough as nails. We got Levante David. You might totally underrated. Him. We totally might underrated. actually hear about him this year now that Luke Keekley is out of the league. Mm-hmm. He's always been overshadowed by him. Yeah. But he's of that caliber. Yes. And then, of course, you got Don McCong Sue. And then you got big boy Vita Vea. Probably one of the funnest football players to watch. That guy is just 
entertaining as hell on the field and off the field. But on the field, man, he he it's like he's out there. You ever seen a kid in like a room full of stuffed animals? Just like throwing them around and yanking them by the <laughs> arm and beating them on the ground and stuff. That's how he plays. I do love every game watching him ragdoll people. <laughs> like at least once a game. Once a game. He'll just like grab them and shake Shake them. them. Yeah. yeah. And then toss them to the side. And Christian McCaffrey, he loves laying on Christmas, Christian oh McCaffrey. Oh my gosh. He destroyed yeah. Christian McCaffrey that first game. Yeah. We played the Panthers last year. That was awesome. That's why Christian McCaffrey couldn't make it in the end zone. I mean, Vernon Hargreaves was able to stop him. Because yes, like, Christian gentlemen. McCaffrey was just dead tired. It would be the way of laying on him. All those times. That was great. That was good football right there. So yeah, we've got we got a lot of characters, a lot of great players, got a lot of great coaches. This is an awesome football. Be excited. I've been a little reserved up until now because it wasn't clear whether we were gonna have a season or not. Yeah, yeah. You know, and now we're getting a little more certainty, especially with the governor of Florida saying <laughs> no, no. any so awesome. professional sports teams, if you're not allowed to play in your state, please come to our state. So, he, yeah, he basically forced everybody's hand at that point. Cause, yeah. You know, somebody in Michigan or Ohio or whatever, one of those governors could say, no, we're going to close up. Uh, you know, teams can't practice. So that's going to hold up the whole NFL, you know, because. You know, if one team can't practice, none of them can practice. But now that Florida is saying, no, you can come down here and practice, there's nothing that stop can stop a team from saying, hey, we're going to go down here and practice. Let's start the season. You know, we'll go to Florida and practice, get some sun. When it's time for the season to start, we'll come up and play, whatever. And even if they don't have to play in their own stadiums, I don't guess. I don't right, know. exactly. And I think that was kind the of the The owner will point. take them wherever they want. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is up to the owners, owner. But yeah, so I think we're on. And I... I'm a little reserved this season, too, because I just feel like all the pieces are falling into place and I'm a little <laughs> shell. I don't know if it, yeah, it's like yeah. kind of too perfect. And I don't know if shell shocked is the right word, but I'm like, is this really happening? Like, are we going <laughs> to? Because there's so many times where we've been burned pretty much every season. Well, we like to stay optimistic. Yeah, we're and, always conducting the hype train. Oh, yeah. You know, we are the masters of the hype track. And when you get the expectations that far up, and we, we've we got our expectations on Super Bowl. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm expecting us to win. I want us to be the first NFL team to have ever have home field advantage. See, I don't NFL like saying we're going to win the Super Bowl because I feel like the Super Bowl is such a different beast and you never really know until you get there how the players are going to react, yeah. how that's well, going to go. If we but could, you do have to, the power of positive, positive thinking. thinking man, you if we go to the Super Bowl, we better win it. I don't. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather not make it than go there and lose. Uh, so we've been staying positive with all this, and we've got such high expectations. It is actually kind of scary. You know, the whole, basically the whole world, definitely the whole football world, is going to have their eyes on us. They all already are. And I have watched, <laughs> okay, I've watched two clips from professional media, mm-hmm. and all they could talk about was how the Buccaneers are cheating. And I'm like, oh, oh so this yeah. is what it feels like to be a Patriots they fan. They are trying so the, hard. With the Rob Gronkowski saying he had the playbook a month ago, mm-hmm. that thing. And then Bruce Arians, you know, the tampering when he said he'd like to have Tom Brady yeah. at the, was it the Combine? Yeah, it was the Combine. So we do have the attention of the national media. And unfortunately, that uh, also brings then, some of the negative attention. And then Tom Brady going to Byron Left, which is how. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's just like, what? It is weird because, and this is something Ralph and I talked about the other night, that Tom Brady is not just a football player. He is a celebrity. celebrity he yeah. is a Top shelf celebrity. cultural icon. You know, people who don't even watch football know who Tom Brady is and that he's the best that's ever been. And we have a lot of guys on the team who are very good football players, but they're not celebrities. Right. They, you don't even know their name. Yeah. Outside, outside of Tampa. Exactly. A lot of these guys. You know, like, so I'm interested to see how that goes. I don't think there will be any jealousy or anything like that, but it's, you know, just another factor that you kind of have to account for. I think, and this is just speculation on my part, but definitely on the defensive side of the ball, but on the offense as well. They know that the spotlight is going to be shining on us brighter than it ever has been. 
and now is going to be their time to shine. Yeah, and I hope that they can take that opportunity. This is one of the criticisms of Jameis, which I'm not sure that he ever could have overcome, is that he does not handle the spotlight well. Mm, And it's like when he has that pressure, he chokes, you know, whether it's to win a game or to have the best season of his career so that he can get a contract. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't handle that spotlight well. And I do feel like it kind of trickled down to the rest of the team. And that's kind of been our MO for years Mm -hmm. since he's been here is that it's always bucks beating bucks. We've always done that to ourselves. And I'm not necessarily blaming Jameis, but I do think that there's probably a little correlation there. Good point. So now, you know, you're led by a player who doesn't make those mistakes and who expects to go to the Super Bowl yeah, and win it every year. it, exactly. So it's Who just... has played under the limelight since his first season. And I think a lot of the other guys here, like you have Shaq Barrett, you have Sue, you have, you know, JPP, who have all been to Super Bowls or they've gotten far in the playoffs and they know how to win and they've experienced winning. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think that's really important to bring that to the team. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we need somebody like JPP and Sue, both who have played at that top level and know how to calm everybody else down. Yeah, exactly. Right. When we get there. Yeah. Be a presence. Yeah. Speaking of getting there. Uh, ESPN is not going to have Booger McFarlane and Joe Testore back for Monday Night Football. Really? Yeah. Who's doing it? We don't know yet. Oh, they don't know either. Is that the one that... They said it's going to be internal, though. They're not going out. I don't think they're going to go out and get like a celebrity or anything. Didn't they try to get Peyton Manning and he Mm -hmm. turned it down? Yeah. They can't get anybody to do it. It Monday Night Football is just not as prestigious as it used to be. You know, back when you didn't have direct TV or, you know, Sunday ticket, you could watch your game. Uh, and you didn't have Thursday night games. You know, it was basically the 1 o'clock game, 4 o'clock game, Monday night football. That was it. That's all the football you got all week. And Monday night football was a big thing, you know, because you get together with your friends Monday night. And, uh, you know, it's just not that because you can, you got so much football now. You've got direct TV where you can watch any game you want at 1 o'clock and any game you want at 4 o'clock. And then you got Game Pass where you can watch games all week long if you want. And you got Monday night games. You got Thursday night games. It's been diluted a little bit. And they haven't had a big name a, a play caller on Monday night football. I think John Gruden, but you know, he was kind of great. Oh, he was annoying. They <laughs> was, all annoy me, way basically. Too friendly. Yeah. yeah. He loved all the quarterback. He loved all the players. Yeah. Loved everybody. This guy's great. He's awesome. I know. Well, also, you know, cable subscriptions have gone down, too. Nobody has cable. We don't have cable. No, we, we don't have ca- cable. Oh, it was less than a cable since... You know how you know someone doesn't have cable? <laughs> don't worry. They'll tell you. <laughs> but Monday Night Football does have implications for fantasy. It's all the fantasy people, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still watched heavily. It's good. Right. Good, good, right. It just ratings. doesn't have the draw. Yeah, the prestige that it used to have. Because that used to be the only primetime game was Monday Night Football. They didn't have Sunday Night Football. It was 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and then Monday Night Football. Then they started having Sunday Night Games, Thursday Night Games. I wish they'd get Chris Collinsworth off of Sunday Night Football. We like it because we get to rag on him the whole time. Try to listen to Chris Collinsworth without hearing some homoerotic. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Double entendre. We're still going to do that one day. Put together a clip of all those. I want to call says. it sexy Chris Collinsworth. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come up with a porn name for I it. I know, right? All right. You got anything else? Hold on. Let me look through my bookmarks. Better check your... Check your... <laughs> You're going to overuse that one, I can tell. Oh, Patrick Omema, our former offensive lineman, re-signed with the Saints. Per Greg Allman, hmm. our Bucks Titans preseason game is officially set for August 29th at 6 p.m. Oh, okay, nice. So we got that one nailed down. <clears throat> Wait, that's the first preseason game, or did you said the Titans? Yeah, the Titans game. Okay, on August 29th. I don't know what week of preseason that is. I would Seems imagine like two. It's, yeah, two or three. Two. The per Greg Allman, the Bucks have six of the current top ten best-selling jerseys in the NFL. Nice. Who are they? Four different Tom Brady's and two from <laughs> Gronkowski. 
That's so That's sad. I know. You know, mm-hmm. Shaq Barrett has to be so mad because he was like our biggest free agent this season, this off season that we kind of mm-hmm. yeah. that the fan base was so pumped about and excited for. Yeah, now you don't hear a word about him. No, Tom Brady has just completely stolen his thunder. Sucked all the attention. But away. you know, offense and defense, they always have that competition. And yeah, it's good. I think it's going to be really good, especially for the guys that we mentioned earlier who know how to win and who have been winners in the past. I think they will definitely have a chip on their shoulder and they'll want to be the unit that's talked about Mm -hmm. on the Buccaneers. So they'll definitely have that motivation. Sean Murphy Bunting said that there will be a competition among the defense to see who can intercept Tom Brady first in practice. Nice. That was per Rick Stroud. (laughs) Yeah, he said that uh, that's their focus this year is to get interceptions, right? Yeah, because remember last season. Towards the end of the season. Towards the end of the season, they were just always there. Yeah, but bat, they, they were batting balls down left What and was right. that stat? We had more interceptions dropped than some teams had altogether. All season, yeah. Right? Yeah, and I think Jamal Dean, he had, I want to say, 15 pass defenses in three games. That's more than most cornerbacks get all season. I know, and Jamel, he came in late in the season. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't start had, had initially. Had a disastrous first game against yeah, the Saints. Yeah, was bad. And then after that, he started balling. He was balling. I'm balling. <laughs> So I'm excited to see that. I am excited to see the secondary have a complete season. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. You know, where they Hopefully play we well to, from the start. Hopefully we won't have to cut anybody. There won't be any serious injuries. Yeah, I'm I'm most worried about injuries, not really character issues. Yeah. I'm I'm not worried about Justin Evans. I think we can do without him. I'm curious to see what happens with him. Mm-hmm. Whether he can come back from that. I think it was Achilles. He had surgery in the off season. And then, you know, we just got to see about his recovery and if he can stay healthy. Because what was it last off season? It was the toe and then it was the Achilles. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just always something with him. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's not one of this coaching staff's guys. Right. Like he was here from Dirk Cutter and Mike Smith. Mm-hmm. So there ain't going to be no, no no love lost if they got to cut him. Mm-hmm. Did you read about those two guys that got arrested? Yes. Or the Giants. Cornerback. It was a Giants guy and a Redskins guy. Yes. Which, come on, guys, you're rivals in the division. You can't be friends. Them's the rules. I think one of the Redskins guy used to be a Giants guy. Oh, gotcha. One of them turned himself in and then the other one I think hasn't yet. I think he did. He did. Eventually. They both did. Yeah. We'll see about that. Who knows? You know, I try not to make up my mind about stuff till facts come out. I agree. Yeah. Gives the NFL a bad look, though. But, you know, that's if you look at there's, what, 2,000 players in the NFL, you know, a handful of them a year get arrested for stupid stuff. That's not so bad. I mean, it's probably less than the general population. Right. Compared to general population. That's really good. Yeah. (laughs) But because they're celebrities, you know, they... They make a big deal about it. All right, is that how we're going to end this podcast, talking about people getting arrested? <laughs> Maybe. Let me see if I can <laughs> round it out. <laughs> uh, Greg Allman was giving some details on the signing bonuses for undrafted rookies. So offensive lineman John Melchin got 15000 This is signing bonus. Plus a $50,000 guaranteed salary. Wide receiver John Hurst got 5000 as did outside linebacker Nasir Player. So that's the kind of income you're looking at as a undrafted free agent rookie. It's not a whole lot. No. Hmm. They're playing for pennies. I wonder if that even covers their flight down there, lodging for the month. It's a grind, man. And then you got to try to make the team. I mean, these guys probably won't even make the team. No, it's real, uh, real slim chances. Although Cameron Brait did it. He did? Yeah. Interesting. Which, if you don't know, we have an awesome group of tight ends. Cameron Brait is incredibly good. He's our dependable touchdown down guy. He's a very dependable tight end. O.J. Howard, big, strong, fast guy. Didn't have a good season last year. A little bit of issue with whether he was used correctly. Arian's offense is just not tight end friendly. He likes to use him more in a blocking situation. Oh, Claire. The Canadian. Oh, he is? Sounds like it. Yeah. Name like Auclair. Yeah, Anthony Auclair. Anthony. 
uh, got re-signed in the offseason. He's our blocker. He's a good blocking tight end. And then the new guy. Tanner he, Hudson. Tanner Hudson, who did great in the preseason. I mean, he was spectacular catches. And then he got a, a few chances in the regular season. Just really didn't show up. No. Oh, we got Jordan Leggett, too. I, mm-hmm. I can't remember if he's practice squad or what, but I follow him on Twitter, and he just had a baby announcement. Oh. So him and his well, wife, congr- I guess, are, are expecting. Con- congratulations. So, yeah, and then, you know, of course, we got that guy from the Patriots. What's his name? I think Gunk. Ron. Glock. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to have just a, just our tight end room is better than most teams wide receiver. Well, right? We're just stacked. I, I mean, Crazy. R- running back, running back, I think is below average at that position. Yeah. But other than that, do you need a running back when you have that tight end group and those receivers? I don't we, know. I don't think so. I think we could be the first team in NFL history to never run the ball. We just pass it every day. <laughs> here's what, here's what we should do. And I'm not joking about this. Never run the ball. And never kick the ball. There you go. You know? I mean, because we've had kicking issues forever. I know. <laughs> so just go for it. Screw it. You know? right. And uh, why run it? Yeah. Let them let them put, you know, you've heard of stacking the boxes where you put eight, nine men front, up front to stop the run. Let them do that to the secondary. You know, let them, let them put eight, nine guys back there. And here's the thing. The NFL today, there are no shutdown corners, really. There's yeah, no, yeah. you know, these elite defensive backs. Yeah, so you know, so let's 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 see if they can stop uh, uh, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rob Gronkowski, O.J. Howard, Cameron Brait. Just put those five guys out there on the field. Let them go long every play. <laughs> Tom Brady, <laughs> throw it with nine defenders back there. Let's see what happens. That would make for some entertaining football. It would. The first NFL team to never run it or kick it. Ah, screw it. Let's never punt it either. Yeah. Why would you punt it? Yeah, that, that would save us roster spots. <laughs> do you even have anybody? Do you have special teams? Do you like feel in the special teams unit? Yeah, you wouldn't have to have special teams. Yeah, at all. Except for the returners. Yeah. But those usually double as running backs or receivers anyway. <laughs> you, have a, you have a team. Your whole offense is on the roster. It's nothing but offensive linemen, the quarterback, and wide receivers. There's no running back. There's Let's no, try it. Let's see how it goes. No we will transform no the NFL. Let's think you know, outside the box here, guys. Running backs are really on the decline. I mean, you didn't see any drafted that high this year. You don't see them. I mean, the ones that do yep. get paid, they're getting, you know, like look at Todd Gurley got this massive contract Next year, he's jettisoned to the, yeah. you know. Well, a massive contract for running backs is like $10 million, $12 million. And I think that it's very rare that running backs get picked in the first round anymore, even. Uh, but then again, you know, look at what Derrick Henry did. Like, yeah. Uh, well, it's those big bruising backs that are, I think, going to make a comeback. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the NFL is cyclical. You know, you'll have I mean, maybe just because of Tennessee's success last year, teams will start doing that and you know, getting the bigger backs that can run the edges and stuff. Here's what's weird is that the NFL, I mean, it used to have the shutdown corners and mm-hmm. then the passing game, they kind of changed the rules. So then the passing game was so dominant yeah. and you would think that the shutdown corners would be making a comeback. You know, there would have been someone that has figured something out to deal with those receivers, but mm-hmm. nobody has. Yeah. Eh, somebody will come along. Something will come along. It's always... The interesting thing about the NFL is it just is constantly evolving and forming into new stuff. Different players rising up, players falling. Speaking of rising up, Buccaneers are going to win the Super Bowl in Tampa Stadium. How awesome is that going to be? That is going to be so awesome. That city is going to go crazy. They should. Yeah. Well deserved. I know. We've been slugging through. Ten years. And I know that. Bucks fans who have been here for a long time kind of, I don't want to say resent the bandwagoners, but they kind of side-eyed the bandwagoners Mm -hmm. a little bit. Fans are always good for an organization. It's great that we have more fans. Like, we need them desperately. We need them. But I think these more established Bucks fans, we should feel such a sense of pride for the team and all that. And for ourselves, because we've been here through it all, thick and thin, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So rather than direct your ire at new bandwagoners, I think if you, as a fan, just feel this sense of 
pride and accomplishment that you've been there through it all and we're about to be rewarded. Yeah, and you got to figure out of all these bandwagoners, if that's what you want to call them, all these new fans that are coming here because of Tom Brady or Rob Gronkowski or just because of the attention or, you know. They, they're excited about the team. Yeah, they're excited about the team, whatever. The, uh, a lot of these guys are going to stay and be Buccaneer fans forever, you know. Large portion of them, anyhow. Yeah. So it's never a bad thing. Never a bad thing. I love it. Like you said, you know, every time we go out in public, we're always wearing Buccaneers gear, and we get comments all the time now you know, about, <laughs> you know, how about that Tom Brady or or, or the, the question that gets me that I'm always befuddled by is like, are you excited about Tom Brady being your quarterback? <laughs> like what? <laughs> How would you not be? I know. Are you, are you disappointed that he's not your quarterback? <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's how we should start turning it around. Didn't you say somebody said that uh, some team had, what was it? Some team had talked about or was looking into getting Tom Brady in free agency and decided not to. Could you imagine what their fan base is probably so angry with them? No, here was my point is that what if we re-signed Jameis and then it came out that we, we were in the, Brady. yeah, we could have had Tom Brady, but didn't yeah. pursue him or told him no or so, you know what I mean? <laughs> How outraged would the fan base be? <laughs> Especially after Jameis Winston went out there and threw 35 touchdowns or 35 uh, interceptions. Yeah. Year. Break I mean, his own record. it was, I mean, I like Jameis and wanted to re-sign him, but when you weigh it, do you get Tom Brady or Jameis Winston? They're, that's a no-brainer. No, not at all. The only quarterback in the league that I would say you wouldn't trade or wouldn't get rid of for Tom Brady would be Drew Brees. And then that would, you could still think about it. You'd be like, eh, maybe, but nah. Yeah, only because he's more established in the system. Like, yeah. Drew Brees has that edge. Yeah. Otherwise... If it was Not, like two free agents, if I had free agent Drew Brees and free agent Tom Brady, oh, Tom I'm Brady. taking Tom Brady. Yeah. Yeah. No question. Should we change the name of this podcast to the uh, Tom Brady Observer? Observer. Maybe. <laughs> we'll consider it. Let's take a vote on it. Just for a year. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us. If you want to get in touch with us, you can contact Molly. Her email address is mollybay at buccaneersobserver.com. My email address is Ralph. At BuccaneersObserver.com. We can be found on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Bucks underscore Observer because at Buccaneers underscore Observer is just dang too long. <laughs> uh, got a YouTube channel. You hunt for us there. Facebook. We got something there. And if you want to leave us a voicemail, uh, look at a link in the description. You just click on that link. They're recording straight from your computer, your cell phone, your lappy top, whatever you're using. We haven't quite got to where we can accept smoke signals yet, but we're working on it. But until then, go Bucks.